following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Let's go to Sean in Canada. Hey, Sean, what's going on? Hey, Tom, how's it going, brother? It's going great, man. How you doing? I'm a huge fan of the show. I just found out about you guys within the last uh, month and a half. Okay. And I can't believe I'm like, where did these guys come from? How did you find out about us? Sometimes I'll go and I'll go in the search engine and try to find some market analysis. Okay, man. <laughs> Welcome to the Tiger family. Appreciate you growling a problem with us, man. Yeah, man. I really appreciate you guys, and I'm just excited to watch your bid. I get a lot out of them. I really love the intros you do and the excitement and the energy, and you guys are pretty special. Well, we got a great network, man. And there's a lot of diversity, man, and we're really lucky. Thank you so much for calling, man. Thanks, buddy. Thanks, Sean. Have a great one. Have a safe Thanks. one. You too, bud. Now, Tom O'Brien. Welcome, folks. This is Tom O'Brien of TFNN. We go five days a week. We go 10 hours a day. We go 24 hours a day in the internet at TFNN.com. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. Hope everyone's having a great day, safe day. Let's make it a great night, folks. Manifest your true intentions. Regardless of what language you speak, your intent will manifest through the word. What you dream, what you feel, and what you really are will be manifested through what you say each and every day. Market wise, let's take a look at it out here. We have the Dow Industrials down 54, NASDAQ off 74, SPs down 12 and a half, gold contract up $4.40, trading at 1250 an ounce. Silver up 13 cents, $16.71 an ounce. Platinum up three bucks, $9.20 an ounce. Copper up two pennies at $2.65 a pound. Light sweet crude up 89 cents, trading $44.27 a barrel. Notes, 10 year note. Uh, down 16 ticks, 126.08. 30-year bond down a point and 10 ticks, 155.19. Uh, you have the notes and the bond market coming down, folks, with volume expanding. Now, you're going into some big strength, but bottom line, you get volume expanding. King dollar. King dollar, kiss it goodbye. King dollar is down 1,031 ticks. You're at 96.085. That 95 has just been calling it, and it looks like it's going to hit this baby in this 95. Now, the way it's hitting 95, um, I suspect we're going to basically probably more than likely take that uh, out uh, with conviction. And uh, 91's the next game out here. The euro is trading at 113. That's on its way to 116. And the yen is at 112.13. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Give us a call, folks. Want to know what's going on in your world? In the world of the S&Ps, let's take a look at them. What do you have? So if we go over to the SPY, you're down a buck and a quarter. You got 50 million shares traded. You're coming into the last minor swing that had 55 million, so you're going to do that. We are coming into the higher volume swing point from the 16th of June. The high of that swing point is 242.83. The low is 241.67. Bottom line, we're going to go after that low, uh, and I suspect we're going to close um, at the lows of the day. We're going to go slightly lower, and this baby more than likely is going to wake up somewhere around uh, the 241 uh, level. Uh, so what you have there, we're only 30 cents away from it. I suspect it'll wake up in the morning and go right after that. Uh, we're at 51 million shares right now on the NY. I mean on the SPY. That'll get up to about maybe 75, 80 million shares. Dow Industrials, bottom line, Dow Industrials, that baby uh, yesterday had failed on price, failed on volume, pulled uh, back down slightly out here, nothing heavy. Uh, you, uh, we, volume wise out there, we have uh, 523 million. So that will do, um, that'll do, that should do a, you know, about 800 million, which would be an expansion uh, from the highs of yesterday. The composite, and the NDX 100, they let us down on the 9th of June. Bottom line, they're leading us down again, and you get the juice behind the move. Um, we have just gone from a 62.34 to 61.72. Uh, the low today was 61.60, and what we're going to see out here is that uh, the 
We're at 1.6 billion right now. We'll end up doing 2.2, 2.3 billion. So you are coming back downtown with an expansion of volume. Uh, the three Qs, it shows it clearly, quite clearly in the three Qs. So when we came down on the 9th of June, you went from a hundred and forty-three dollars and ninety cents down to one thirty-eight. You did it on one hundred nine million shares. You did the counter trend bounce on thirty-four million. We're coming back down on forty-three million. And it looks to me like what we're going to do here is that this is going to go after the lowest swing point because what we also have is that we have a high volume low from the seventeenth and eighteenth of May. That's one thirty-six oh five. Bottom line, looks like it wants to go hit it. Notes. Okay, so 10-year note. Getting whacked out here today. You have, you got to a price point of 126.05. We're at 126.09. Now, you have an expansion of volume from the last few days. That being said, guess what? Not enough volume to break this down. You're going into the huge amount of strength from the 14th, where we had 2.5. 4 million contracts, as well as June 2nd, where we had 1.57 million contracts. And the low of that day is 126.04. Thus far, we've got the 126.05. So they get the price going. They don't have the volume going. 30-year, same type of setup inside the 30-year. 30-year, uh, you're down on 306,000 contracts right now. Uh, that is coming into uh, 495,000. In fact, that is a long way to go before we get to the bottom of that strength, which was 153.29. We're at 155.19. Gold contract, what do we have with gold? Gold contract still having a hard time getting off this price point. Uh, and that's with the dollar getting smoked, folks. Uh, we'll get to that in a second. But uh, so inside the gold market, what you have is this. Uh, you are at 12.50.60. You know, bottom line is it staying inside the 1241 level, good bottom line. We'll see whether uh, gold needs a sign of strength. That's the bottom line. Um, it's, it's held showing that there's not enough sellers to get it to lower, uh, but what hasn't happened is that there's not enough force, in fact, to get it higher. Uh, silver market, you know, silver just may be the uh, catalyst that uh, can have uh, gold take a hike uh, forward. Uh, what silver has got out here today is that it has the price spread, has the volume, has all of it. Uh, we're at uh, 1676, and I want to see silver get inside the 1688 area. King dollar, king dollar, get out the peanut butter, get out the jelly, get out the marshmallow, get it all out, folks. Uh, bottom line, this is going to be pretty intense because this is a hard break. You talk about a hard break, man. This is pretty intense. So. Right now, we're at 96.070. Uh, 96.020 was where we rejected lower price before. Now, you're, you're barreling into this thing with 32,000 contracts versus 21,000. So that's saying that your probability gets much higher. That it's just going to blow it away. Uh, we, we take a look at the uh, continuous contract out here. And what it's gunning for is election night, which is 95.905. Well, actually, we're right next to that. Uh, it looks like, you know, this is going to be pretty intense, folks. It, we're gunning for 91 to 92. That's where this is set up. Hold on for the ride. We're going to be right back, folks. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com.
In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Tom, take your phone calls. Now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow Industrials right now down 45. You get the Nasdaq down 75. S&Ps are down uh, 12 and a half. Percentage-wise out here, what that is is that the Dow is down two tenths of a percent. S&Ps four tenths. Nasdaq 1.2 percent. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, as we do each and every Tuesday at 20 past the first hour. Now, don't forget, folks. Basil got an outstanding show every trading day right here, 11 to 12 Eastern Standard Time. And no matter where you're listening, always remember that you can get us right on your cell phone, right in your browser. You just go to TFNN.com, hit Tiger TV on the right-hand side. Going to pick up some great HD quality uh, video as well as audio. Now, as you're over at TFNN, you can test drive Basil's newsletter. 30 days, absolutely free. The way you do it, when you go to TFNN, go to Newsletters, hit Trading Newsletters. You'll see the opening call, test drive his newsletter, 30 days, absolutely free. Basil Chapman, what's going on? Hi, Tom. How are you? I'm doing great, man. Yourself? Very good. Thank you. Good. So, yeah. where are we going to go? <laughs> so, I, <laughs> I thought I'd, I'd do something a little different this week. Um, I'll talk about the markets, but okay. I also want to do a show. I don't often do this. Um, every single day, I send out a lot of charts. Okay. And um, I start off with the Dow chart, and I do an analysis of that. Uh, within that context, for instance, here I've got the 120-minute chart. I show it in two in two uh, situations. It's the same Dow chart, except on the left side, I don't have the MACD and the stochastic, the moving average convergence divergence. I have them in the right chart. Okay. So I keep the, they keep I keep them as separate techniques. Uh, if I can find consistency in my different Chapman wave techniques that is giving me um, some consensus and that's what I like. Yes. And what we had is we had a peak E back at the, the all time high 21,535 and uh, that was also Chapman wave five. And then what I look for, it's the, the only um, coincidence it has now with um, Elliott wave is that it has five waves. So, um, if you look at this, it's a, you can see there's a pink one, a pink two, pink three, and then there was a spike yesterday that went much higher than two. Now, in Elliott Wave, that would have negated it. But over the years, I've, I've really been working hard at this as a concept, uh, maybe for two, two and a half years, trying it out in the futures market and all sorts of uh, different uh, ways. And for me, it seemed very clear that if there was a break 
underneath the low of 21,333. That was the break of um, a few days ago. Um, then I would get that five, and that's really what I was anticipating. So okay. we had been short just after the um, the top was made, went back to short the Dow, um, quite heavily short. And now what we're looking at is that the MACD and stochastic, this is from yesterday, um, looked as if the MACD was going to deflect lower, and there was a real good chance that if there was just a slightly lower low intraday today than yesterday, then there would be a good chance that we would break the low of 21,333. And here is the actual chart. Let me go to it right now. And there's the that's the daily. I'm going to go to that in a moment. But there is the 120-minute chart. And what did we do? We went down to 21,328. So this is current. This is the, the other one was from last night when I showed my subscribers this morning. And here's the resulting uh, candle. Look at that sharp candle down. Yes. And it went to a lower low. Now it's gone to a five. And that says at a five, this is going to be very important because as it looks right now, this is what I call a Chapman Wave Roman candle um, at this particular point on this 120 minute chart right here. That's what I call a Roman candle. Now, one of the things about it is when it comes off about the third bar from the top, like that one over there, if you start to trade into the wick for um, in a shorter time period, there's a real good chance you're going to go to the low and take it out. When it occurs towards the bottom of a move, uh, in this case, it's a 120-minute chart, then you've got to look for an anticipated bounce. I think that that bounce is going to be tough to get. And I'm looking at this, and I'm thinking that there's a good chance that the weakness continues uh, into tomorrow, at least. Yes, the MACD, it did. Um, this is the 120, the, sorry, let me go to the day, the 120-minute uh, chart here. So we're looking at apples and apples. So I expected that it would deflect lower. And that's what I discussed in my, my overview for my, uh, for my subscribers this morning. Now, I said the stochastic, which was right there, should be turning down. And so far, that's exactly what happened. Coincidentally, in the daily chart, now let me go to the daily chart, I have the same thing. I had a, a coincident a Chapman Wave 5 at the 21,535 all-time high on the 20th of June. And now I said this is probably one. We're in two, and I'm expecting three to take us below trough B. And okay. that was at 21,333 level. So today we've already done that. So it's still fascinating that with all, there, there has been quite a, quite a bit of negativity, but it hasn't been followed through negativity that really env uh, envelops the market. And that's the reason why we've held the nine period moving average up until now. We're below it in the daily. We've still got, what, a half an hour, 35 minutes before the close. But that red line is the 20-period is the moving average. And I'm suspecting that we're going to go to the 21,295 for a test of that. And you can see the MACD here is very negative. This is the same chart. This is the daily on the left, daily on the right, except you have included the MACD and stochastic. And as the stochastic, let me move that away, looks like it's deflecting lower. The on-balance volume is at the lows, starting to fail. So this says to me that the upside is very limited as I see it now. The downside is uh, potentially starting to increase. And one of the things that I'd say to uh, subscribers uh, for my for uh, my um, the opening call subscribers, what it, what I said is, within the context of the markets, the SMHs, which is the uh, semiconductor, yes. uh, let me just get there, the semiconductor index, this, this is the market vector semiconductor ETF, look to me after having gone through all the different, uh, really the leading uh, semiconductor stocks, yeah. and in the investor's business daily, they're, they're included in the, in the top 15. You've got at least two or three there. And I, I went through them on my show this morning and yesterday. And they look like they're topping. And they've been the leaders. And what I've said is that my suspicion is the semiconductors really have to drag us down, drag the QQQ, which is the NDX 100, and the XLK, which is really the high tech. This is really the tech sector of the S&P. And then we'll see where the market starts to rotate to. So, and th this is going to be really Really interesting. Why? Because um, the steals on Friday suddenly came alive and then all of a sudden they faded. It's as if fund managers are now saying, well, whoa, where do we go? What do we do? So that's, I think, another reason why we're going to have, usually we have very quiet trading in the summer. I think it's going to be a little quieter than usual. 
as fund managers kind of digest all these gains that they've got in some of the sectors if they were in them and the ones that they aren't in they're just going to be trying to get in and get out they're going to have tight stops so i think it's going to be very choppy and what's really important about this you remember last week i was talking about the tlt we we long the tlt we still actually long the tlt from 123 that's the iShares 20-year treasury bond etf yes but it's screamed up to 128.57 now, this is going to be very interesting because the weekly chart is still very strong. And, you know, uh, Draghi this morning uh, hinted that uh, he, he was the, the reason really for, for the uh, sharp pullback in the bonds. But actually, when I look at the, um, the longer term charts, oops, that's the break. Um, the longer term charts show that... Uh, the yields are still going to be very low. I don't think they're going to bounce yeah. all that much. Stay right there. Uh, folks, stay right there. Basil and I are coming right back. Dow Industrials are right now down 56. Nasdaq's up 84. S&Ps are up 14. Basil and I are coming right back, folks. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank Bank is a member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow Industrials right now down 52. You get the Nasdaq off 83. S&Ps are off uh, 13 and a half. We're talking about our Mr. Ba uh, I mean, Mr. Basil Chapman. We are talking markets. And, of course, don't forget, folks, you can test drive Basil's newsletter uh, 30 days, absolutely free the way you do it. Come over to our website at tfnn.com. Go to newsletters. Go to trading newsletters. You'll see the opening call. You can test drive it 30 days, absolutely free. So, uh, okay, so I get, the, I get your chart up here, Basil. Right, so this is the chart, the weekly chart of 
I call it my triple yield chart. I show my subscribers yes. every week. And it's got on the top, the white is the TYX. That's the 30-year yield of the T-bond. This is the 10. The brown is the 10-year T-note yield, yep. TNX. And below the 5-year T-note, FVX. Okay. And you can see that they, it, they held the trend line support. And my suspicion is that they could they could rally a little bit more. I'm going to have to watch this very carefully because you know for the TLT to get um, a six point gain, five six point gain is is amazing because you know this is it's bonds. This is very sure. conservative. So I'm going to be watching that very carefully for subscribers. But my thinking here is that. The yields have started to make lower lows and lower, lower highs. If you look, I can take this horizontal line anywhere. It's not a big deal. We've been here. We've actually been even lower before. Sure. So we're, we're kind of in the middle of the range. I don't think it's going to be yields. It's going to be the response to the thinking. And if you go to, I've shown you this chart before. This is the iShares Global Timber and Forestry ETF, this chart right here at the top. I think it's making a, a top here. This is timber and forestry. And on the on the bottom is the Philadelphia Housing Index. And that's going to, that looks like on Friday, if it doesn't break above 286.32, it's going to make the peak F top. And I think that that's going to be a consolidation. I don't see it right now as either of them is smashing to the downside. But I think that this is the first decent consolidation we're going to get. And that says to me, OK, so don't just ignore the fact that the chart says the yields are stuck in a range. I'm going to watch this quite closely. So I think that this is a period, and one of the reasons why I felt more comfortable looking at the short side of the market, we actually have a very small water product stock that's doing very nicely. So you can find these little niches that are independent of the market. But mostly, I think what we're looking at is that it's really time, and I think this is both politically and because I think in a way they're related right now, there's some, enough uncertainty. So I think politically and economic in terms of the if I look at some of the sectors if I if I'm correct in looking at the uh, the semis which led us up whenever a particular sector that's had been extremely strong starts to take a breather in other words starts to pull back and that does that's not working anymore what happens is that there's a, a digestive phase. Uh, fund managers keep trying to go in there it doesn't work and then they start putting the money back out it's like it needs everything needs a rest and then they have to sure. find a place to put the money so i think that that corresponds to what i'm looking at the spy if i go to the s p it's the same thing as the dow it's it, everything about it looks like it's it's some kind of at least a short maybe even an intermediate term top loss look at that there's that arch formation turning down got an, and this finally you've got an f in the weekly chart i think we're in for a rest and now it it's a it's it's we need it. I mean, the markets should not go straight up all the time because um, they may become extremely vulnerable. This way, they go straight it. down. <laughs> and then they go straight down. That's exactly right. So this way, it could be just a, you know, it's like an athlete. You need to breathe and the market needs to breathe. And that's breathe. really what I think we need right, so right at this moment. As you're breathing, folks, come over to our website at TFNN. Go to newsletters. Go to trading newsletters. You can test drive Basel's newsletter. Opening call, 30 days, absolutely free. Basil, you have a great night, safe night, and of course, we look forward to the show tomorrow. Thank you very much, Tom. Have a great evening. Thank you. Stay right there. Well, actually, no, we're not, we're not going anywhere. We're staying right here. They're, they're, gonna, they're, they're hammering this NASDAQ, that's for sure. Let's go to uh, Tim in Denver, Colorado. Hey, Tim, what's going on? Let it go down, right, Tommy? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, man, they're, this, this NASDAQ, they, 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 they want to take it south, coming right into the close. They just... They're selling this baby off. I think we just hit another low. Let me just see this. Yeah, we did. We just blew out the low. So, um, yeah, uh, the low, the first low was at uh, 2 o'clock today. That was at uh, 56.85. So it just went down. They were at 56.84 right now. So we, we're talking biotechs, huh? <laughs> yeah, what do you, what's your feeling you got here? You know, they broke out and, and, you know, they, 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 they were felt like they were rotating into them, to be honest with you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, well, uh, I, you know, I get a false break. I mean, I, you know, I don't know what you're feeling. Um, I don't feel like it's a false break. OK, so what, watch the this is what we have, folks, is that you had the last week, the biotechs went from two hundred and ninety dollars 
At the end of the week, they were at 323. So it was, it was a large break. It got over the consolidation um, that we've been in since the 15th of January. And, and it has the volume, okay? So, you know, that to me is like, okay, first what it has to do is come back to the bottom of that range, which is 298. Um, and if it comes up back like it's doing today, uh, Tim, that would be a buy versus a sell. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's what I'm, I'm kind of thinking that, too. Yeah. Um, what do you think I can get any more out of this LABD? Uh, let's go take a look at the LABD. So uh, the LABD, folks, is the uh, Daily uh, Direction Biotech Bear, which is three times the inverse correlation. This thing is... Um, you know, meaning that he shot the um, biotechs. Yeah, no, I would, listen, if you got it, I'd stay there right now. I mean, I, I think you get a couple of days of this, man. You That's know? what I'm kind of thinking, too, yeah. and then. Yeah, there's, there's no yeah, reason, that... you know, this can't get up until like 792, somewhere in there. Actually, I mean, it can go right to 875, you know, because. What you think you, you get that high, huh? Well, what you'd be looking for when you go into the IBB, see, once you get a, I mean, that was, that was a heck of a breakout. And so you pull back, you know, a normal pullback after this breakout, this is a quick one, but the, bo the bottom line is that a normal one does bring you right back to where it starts from, you know? Right, right. These are so touchy. When did you get out? <laughs> no, well, particularly in the, the biotech. So, so picture what happened here, folks, okay? The biotechs, um, you know, are always volatile. There's no two ways about that. If we, if we go from the highs to the lows inside the, the biotechs, you know, I can bring you back to 2011, the biotechs, the IBB is $83. It goes all the way up to 400. Tops out July of 2015. Then goes all the way back down to 240 in February of 2016. Now, what had happened is that when the election came, bottom line, you know, Trump's saying he's going to, you know, bring drug prices down and all that. Well, bottom line, what you had last week is that, no, none of that's going to happen. In fact, the... Uh, uh, well, what got signed by the administration and Trump is that, no, now the drug companies are going to get together with the insurance companies and we're going to be paying just as much. That was what that whole acceleration was all about. And it's real. It broke out, has the volume, has, has all of it. So, um, you know, I'd, I'd, yeah. I'd stay where you are. It'd be nice to see the IBB get an expansion of volume, you know, tomorrow. And it's going to need it. And then, hey, you know, you're at, let's see, you're, what is the, yeah, you're at Wednesday. Maybe, maybe it's just take it off tomorrow, you know. Yeah. yeah. I, I think you're going to get do. some, you know, slight follow through here. I, I wouldn't be shot here, you know, going into next week, though. Not in the biotechs. Thanks, Tommy. Cooking, brother. Have a great one. Have a safe one. Stay right there, folks. We'll come right back. Dow right now is down 52. Nasdaq's off 86. S&P's are off 13 and a half. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen live during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming. See high definition video giving you crystal clear charts as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp full fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear high definition audio and video. Tiger TV exclusively at TFNN.com. With over $56 million in cash and over $66 million in working capital, Great Panther Silver is positioned as a company with a solid foundation and poised for growth. While completely unhedged to the price of silver, Great Panther retains 100% ownership in two producing mines in Mexico, which is the top silver producing country in the world, along with future potential production in Peru. Great Panther is highly leveraged to the price of silver, and after a great year of performance in 2000, 
2016, Great Panther Silver has a strong outlook for 2017 as well. With good liquidity in trading and strong fundamentals on the balance sheet while remaining completely unhedged to the price of gold and silver, now is a perfect time to take a closer look at this equity. If you'd like to find out more about Great Panther Silver, then go to greatpanther.com or check them out on the NYSE market, symbol GPL, or the TSX, symbol GPR. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Tom, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Tom O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. Let's go inside the indices, see where the strength is versus the weakness. So, inside the Dow Industrials, folks, uh, strength out here. Putting positive points into it, even though it's down 60 bucks, is you have JP Morgan as the leader putting six positive points, Home Depot putting six, Walmart putting three. Taking away from it, Triple M, that's uh, putting 15 negative, Apple's putting 10, Microsoft's putting eight, Johnson & Johnson is putting six, Verizon's putting five. Inside the uh, NDX 100, uh, strength versus the weakness, the strength out here is tractor supply putting 2% uh, into it. Uh, Dollar Tree putting 1.1, 1 .1, uh, then uh, taking it away from it. Uh, you got you quite a few of them down pretty good. You have the uh, Seagate Technology down 6.5%. Uh, you get JD.com down 5.25%. You get Netflix off 4%. So uh, those babies, they uh, dragging that NDX down. Uh, we take a look at the volume. We're at 580 on the NYSE. And the composite, uh, we're at 1.79. The three Qs... Right now, you're uh, at 49 million. Yeah, this is going to be... Uh, so we're at the lows here in the queues. Um, and just closing anywhere in here, this is one of these situations that the queues wake up in the morning, they go to sleep, they wake up in the morning. Your swing point here on the queues is 137.47. And, you know, this won't be hard to take out when you just f close pretty close to these close pretty close to these lows out here the reason uh, that I'm saying that is that what you already had is that when we broke downtown on the 9th what you had done then is you broke the uptrend in a huge way not in a small way you confirmed that structure uh, when the bottom line is that you not only you broke um, the whole trend line, and the trend line's a monster too, by the way, going back to $118 on the queues. Um, you know, you broke it, you came back up, tested the underside, underside of that trend line, and then you start falling apart again. So uh, if, in fact, uh, we get volume on the way down uh, tomorrow as we're going after that, that's going to be a big heads up. Uh, some of the higher volume stocks uh, in this market out here right now. You have Advanced Micro down, uh, down 61. Um, Sprint is uh, up 21. You get Micron Tech down 74. NVIDIA is down five bucks. Apple's down a buck and a half. Let's go over and take a look at uh, Apple. Okay, so. Apple's going to need a lot more volume to get to lower price, you know. Um, Apple's down today, 20 million shares. That's not even close. That needs uh, about a good 50 million as it goes after that uh, 
lowest swing point. Now, I expect that that's going to get tested. Uh, the number we're looking for in that test is 144.20. Uh, a little back over to this. I saw this. Let me get this. Uh, Arconic. So, Arconic, this thing is down another 10% today. This is a... You got to get your stops if you own this. This is a spinoff of Alcoa. And what the problem here is, folks, is that uh, this spinoff here, um, they stuck it with the uh, panels that um, up in Canada, that, that huge, um, no, it wasn't Canada. It was in London. It was London. Um, and London, rather. Uh, that the fire, bottom line, is that um, that company's going to have big problems because uh, it's not just... Um, that one high rise. I suspect there's going to be a lot more panels that they made. It's going to be one of these legacy cases that go on and on and on. So let's go take a look at the uh, Google. So Google could find uh, chump chains out here today, uh, two million bucks. That uh, two billion bucks rather. That being said, um, they're, they're selling Google. You know, Google uh, yesterday had a high of uh, 993. You're at 950. It's going after the swing point. It's going to close at the Pretty close to the lows of the day. This is going to go after the, the lowest swing points, and Google has plenty of high volume swing lows to go after. Uh, Amazon, what do we got with Amazon out here? Amazon's got a slight expansion of volume also, so Amazon's down fourteen and a half dollars. That wants to uh, get down to the lower end, also, which is nine twenty-seven. Uh, Microsoft. Microsoft down a buck 16. 68 is game. Right now you're at 69.38. Uh, Facebook, and Facebook was the only, only one out of those FANG stocks that had tested its high, rejected the high, had light volume. That was done yesterday. So we just went from 156.50, which is, which is the high. Um, you're coming down. It's going to go to the bottom of this uh, consolidation, which is 144. So there's going to be, uh, let's go take a look at Walmart for a second, because Walmart and Amazon, uh, bottom line, they are no doubt battling each other. Uh, Walmart's up 58 cents, you know. And that already gapped down. Walmart uh, looks like it's going to go to a lower price also. Goldman, let's go to Goldman Sachs. So Goldman Sachs yesterday, and the financials in general. Financials in general got a, got a pop. Yesterday, Goldman gets up to 221. Right now, you're at 220. This is building cause to go downtown. You're going to have another failure out here today. Got to higher price. Couldn't hold the price. Has light volume. Uh, Goldman is a confirmed ABC structure down to 202. You're at 220. Also has a high volume low at 209. Um, you know, what you did have is that you had uh, the... Uh, Janet Yellen speaking uh, at 1 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And that, that uh, I'm not sure whether, it, we had some selling before that was taking place, but bottom line is that uh, when you do look at the, uh, the market, a lot of the selling, yeah, let's see, so what time is this? Well, I guess it, yeah, the selling started right before she got on. The selling started at 12.30. Uh, you know, 12.30 today, let's see, 12.30, we're at 20, 434. And right now you're at 2421. That's on your um, E minis. You know, so that's that's a decent number on the way down. There's no two ways about that. Uh, we go and look at the GDX, uh, you know, because we, of course with the dollar index down like this, you know, this gold no doubt should be going. It's not, that's a concern, but no doubt about that. Uh, GDX, this is just a pullback with light volume. Um, let me go look at AEM and Eco Eagle. Mm, and now that's 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 down 110. I don't like this volume though. So this is pulling back at 1.2 million. You're pulling back into 989,000. That's not great. Let me go look at a few others. So Franco Nevada FNV. That looks all right. Royal Gold RGLD. It looks all right, too. Let's go to Barrick, which is the largest waiting structure. Well, Barrick's got some price spread. But 
you're coming into 17.6 million, you're only done seven. So Barrick is pulling back with light volume. Newmont, which is the second largest waiting structure, that's down 63 cents. Yeah. That's going into 4.3 million. It's done 3.3 right now. You stay right there, folks, and we'll be coming right back. Dow Industrials right now down 74, accelerating. NASDAQ's down 95. S&P's are down 17. We'll get it right back. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, we have the uh, Dow Industrials right now down 78. NASDAQ's down 97. S&P's are down 7.5. And, and that's uh, so uh, percent and a half in the NASDAQ, uh, half a percent on the S&P's, only three-tenths of one percent uh, inside the uh, Dow Industrials. Um, we take a look at the, this composite. So what you're going to have here, uh, this composite is going to uh, basically get down uh, where we've been trading on the 9th. Uh, the, that low there is uh, 61.37. Right now it's 61.49. And that's where the real danger comes in, meaning that as you sell down all day, it's going to have volume. You're going into a high volume day, not only of the 9th, but... The May dates are what you want to keep your eye on right now, folks, because the low in May eight, on May 18th was 59.96. That's, uh, you know, 100 and, uh, what, 152 points from where we are. Uh, we could hit there tomorrow in a heartbeat. Um, we hit there, then it's going to be wide open for 59.28. 
If we go over and we take a look at the uh, spy and see that characteristic, because I suspect um, you're going to see some volume get pushed into the spy also coming into the close out here. Uh, the spy broke this minus swing point of two hundred forty-one dollars and sixty-three cents. Um, that's eighty-four million. We get sixty-four. We'll see whether we do eighty-four. They'll, they'll throw at least fifteen million in there. We'll see. If we get twenty. Uh, what's, what's also going on though? The spy looks like it wants to trade down to this two thirty-five area, uh, and that is your next benchmark from outside of the, where the consolidation is. When we came down on uh, June sixth, uh, folks, is the May 17th and May 18th, they're high volume swing lows. And bottom line, uh, the way we're coming down right here, I expect we're going to hit them. Uh, on this run, by the way, uh, small caps, small caps gave it up. These things have been wild, man. Uh, small caps, uh, bottom line, finished with the, that was the only indice that didn't fail on price and volume yesterday. Uh, bottom line, gave it up today. And um, the volume is 22 million. You know, yes, they were going high with 22 million. We'll see if they put any volume into this uh, as we come into the close. You know, if you'd like to test drive either my gold report, folks, or market insights, you can do either or or both. Uh, the way you do that, you come over to our website at TFNN. You'd like to test drive the gold report, just go to newsletters, uh, go to uh, investment newsletters you see the gold report there you can test drive it 30 days absolutely free if you'd like to test drive market insights go to trading newsletters test drive that for two weeks absolutely free let's go take a look at the xau the hui so the xau gold bugs index that is down a buck 18 today you're at 81.66 and yeah that's gonna be so 80 80.26, that thing can actually get to. That's quite a way down. That's about uh, another point, buck 20 down. Uh, the, the Gold Bugs Index, the HUI, you're talking 188, we're at 190.34. It's going to be interesting getting the gold, getting the, what, what, hey, I, I know another way to get this. Uh, the gold market is, well, between the HUI and the, the uh, XAU is small enough that you can kind of gauge it before the actual number comes in. It's going nah, to be a close call today because I just brought up a couple of the individual equities and a couple of the individual equities look like they got almost the same amount of volume as we went up. So that's not a great indication. Uh, that you're going to get lighter volume. That's what we're looking for on a pullback. You stay right there, folks. We'll be coming back with some numbers. Uh, Dow Industrials are right now down 80. NASDAQ's off 97. S&P's are down 18. NASDAQ uh, NDX 100. That's the leader on the way down, folks. Stay right there. We're coming right back. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is TFNN. The following is a presentation of TFNN.
The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Let's go to uh, Nick in Tampa. Hey, Nick, what's going on? Tom O'Brien, it is an absolute pleasure. <laughs> Thanks so much, man. We appreciate you calling. No problem. Um, dude, I've been listening to your show for about two years now, and it has just been wonderful. I listen to you, Basil, Andy. You guys do an amazing job. Well, thank you so much. Um, we appreciate you growling and prowling out here with us. Now, Tom O'Brien. <laughs> Welcome, folks. This is Tom O'Brien of TFNN. We have five days a week. We go 10 hours a day. We go 24 hours a day on the Internet at TFNN.com. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. Hope everyone's having a great day, safe day. Let's make it a great night, folks. You are only responsible for your half of a relationship. There are two halves in every relationship, but you're only responsible for your half of the relationship. It's not up to you to control the other half. Respect the other half, and there will always going to be peace in that relationship. Market-wise, let's take a look at it out here. We have the Dow Industrials down 98, NASDAQ off 100, S&P's down 17, gold contract up $2.50, trading at 12.4890, silver up 5 cents, $16.62. Now, both gold and silver, folks, we need to catch a bid on them. Uh, the, you know, bottom line, we'll see whether we do. We, we, the way that the dollar got crushed out here today, we should have caught a bid. We didn't. We'll see where it shakes out. Platinum, platinum uh, trading at 918 an ounce. Copper, copper up a penny and a half at 265 a pound. Light sweet crude down 87 cents, up 87 cents rather, uh, at $44.25 a barrel. We're going to get the EIA numbers uh, tonight, uh, EPI numbers tonight, uh, EIA numbers at 1030 tomorrow. Notes, 10 year note down 17.6, 126.07, 30 year bond down a point. And a half, almost a point and 13 ticks, 155.16. Now, both notes and bonds did come down with volume, folks. Uh, they had expanded volume. We'll see how they uh, handle um, trading tomorrow. Uh, they came into, however, they didn't break down. They came into monster volume days. So it's going to need more than one day with an expansion of volume on the way down. King dollar, different ball game. King dollar, growling, prowling, screaming. Wants 95, it almost hit 95 today. We hit 96,100 right now, down 1,016 ticks. Um, it looks to me that King Dollar, King Dollar's been trying to get to this 95. So 95, folks, is where we started election night. Uh, it first tanked to 95, and then bottom line, six weeks later, it's at 103. Now, it's been coming down since 103, got croaked. And actually, the way that it's traded out here, I suspected the 91 would take uh, a little bit longer. Doesn't look like it's going to. It looks like this thing actually uh, doesn't want to stop at the 95 and get its head wrapped around 91. Now, 91 is the lower part of the consolidation that we've been in since March of 2015. We go to 91, you're going to see some heavy volatility out here. The euro, the euro broke topside. We're at 113 and a half. The euro uh, bottom line wants to go to 116, and that's, that's one of the catalysts is here. I mean, there's a direct correlation, uh, but the euro cleared uh, this consolidation. It did it pretty good. The yen's trading at 112.21. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Give us a call, folks. Want to know what's going on in your world? In the world of the S&Ps, let's take a look at it. What do you have? Guess what, folks? What do we do? You blew apart, volume comes out again, bottom line, we're going lower. Um, it was going after the swing point of the 16th. That's $241.63. We're at $241.33. We're underneath it. You did 75 million shares versus that 85 million. You closed at the lows. This wants to go after the May 17th and 18th area, which is, which is a long way down, by the way. That's six points from where we are. That's 235.43. Now, that being said, guess what? When we go through this dollar, I'm going to show you that the, many of the markets have already come back to where election night was. Markets rallied off that election night. Bottom line, 
The peso, if you want to see something that's amazing, the peso, folks, you know, bottom line between uh, Trump saying he's going to do a wall doing all this and Mexico's going to be in trouble. Well, guess what? The peso is stronger than the dollar. And that's before the election, okay? So the bottom line is that you can take the rhetoric, throw it out, you want to make money or not make money, bottom line. The spy right now, that number on the spy is dangerous. That number on the spy where we started from is 211. Yeah, 211, okay? And we're 241. Dow Industrials. We take a look at the Dow Industrials. This is what you have with the Dow Industrials. Uh, Dow Industrials come down 98 bucks. You did 880 million, so you had an expansion of volume on the way down. We'll see how the Dow bottom line gets down into this uh, 20, 21,169 would be your next number. Now, if you get if you get back inside the 21,169, oh baby, that's gonna that's gonna get you down into the uh, 20,373 area. The composite and the NDX 100, that's what led the market all the way down. Bottom line, came right across today, same deal. Uh, sold all day, closed at its lows. The lowest swing point that it's going after is 61.10. That's only 30 bucks away from where we are, $36, $26. Uh, $36. Um, this is going after the lows of the 8th, the 18th and the 17th of May, and that is $59.96. Gold contract, what do we have with the gold contract? Now check it out. Okay, so gold out here, you know, four o'clock in the morning uh, yesterday, uh, they take gold south, they get down to 236.50. It retests that area, rejects it, comes back inside the range. Today you did 200,000 contracts, good contract volume. You're in, inside the range, we need a bid. Bottom line, showing there's no sellers, but we don't have a bid yet, meaning where are the buyers? Silver, same type of setup inside silver. Uh, silver right now, uh, silver got a better bid than gold, though. That's, and that's important because silver can get us out of here. Silver is a psycho metal, no two ways about that. Uh, silver did 51,000 contracts. I still want to see silver inside $16.88, and you're at 16 dollars The note and bond market, what you have with this is that the note market and the bond market came down on volume. Uh, that being said, not the type of volume that would need to actually break down because we were going into 1.57 million contracts as well as 2.4. We did 1.5 though, okay? So bottom line is that that's saying that, guess what? Game here is on probably 125, 14. You could get down to that level pretty easy. 30-year, same type of uh, setup inside the 30-year. Now, let's go over to good old King Dollar. So King Dollar, folks, this little baby came down, broke apart everything. Uh, we take a look at this on a weekly. What you're going to see is it's sticking out like a sore thumb. 95.905. Well, we hit 96.045. This looks to me like it's not only going to blow it apart. It's going to blow it apart, man. This thing, next stop is 94, and they get these spike lows out here at 91. If we go over to the euro and take a look at the euro quickly, what you're going to see is the euro broke topside. This is a clean break, man. The euro just took everything out, uh, taking no prisoners. This euro is on its way up to 116. If you get a euro at 116, we're going to have a dollar at 91, and we'll have gold up at 1300. You stay right there, folks. We'll be coming right back. Dow Industrials finished down 98. NASDAQ off 100. S&P's down 15 and a half. We're going to be right back. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? 
Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Tom, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow Industrials finished down 98. You had the Nasdaq off 100. S&P's off 15 and a half. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Andy Hecht, as we do every Tuesday and Thursday. Andy's got a great show here every Tuesday and Thursday, folks. 5 to 6 Eastern Standard Time. Don't forget, right on your cell phone, tfnn.com. Hit Tiger TV. Going to get some great HD quality video as well as audio. Now, Andy also has two newsletters. You can test drive either one of them or both of them by coming over to our website at TFNN. You're going to go to the newsletters and you're going to see the Technomento Commodity Report. You can test drive that one month, absolutely free. There's your free trial right there. Andy just started a new one about a month ago, the Daily Essential Equities. You can test drive that also right here, right now. Andy Heck, what's going on? Hey, Tom, how are you? I'd be doing better, man, if you go buy a whole bunch of gold and silver for me. Well, yeah, man, the dollar. You know what? It's not crunk. a question. It's a not. It's not a question of if. If it's a question of when they go higher. In my opinion. I, uh, yeah. You know the dollar. The dollar is. You know is gonna. It looks like it's gonna go right through ninety five point eight. It's not yeah. even. Uh, it might not. It might not. This is the fourth straight month of losses for the dollar. If we close uh, below ninety seven. Sure. Uh, no, we're coming listen, up to I, I, critical support. The Draghi is speaking hawkish on the euro. Uh, you know, the cards are lined up here. You're going to get a big update. Let's talk a little bit about what happened yesterday in gold, because I, I didn't get a chance to get on the air with you yesterday. Oh, yeah, I was trading and it. <laughs> I, I, I wanted to talk about that because that was, uh, listen, so what we had there was we had a, a, a 1.8 million ounce execution. Right. That took place in one minute. Right. Uh, at 9 a.m. London time, 4 a.m. Eastern time. Yes. And, uh, you know, it could be one of three things. A fat finger from a high-frequency trader. Um, it, it also could be a very inexperienced execution on a large sell order. Right. Or it could have been a little bit of manipulation. Uh, right. Uh, you know, listen. So, yeah. So, you don't so know. I'm I sure know. the FTC so is looking into it. Yeah. It's... Did you say, what did you say? I said, I'm sure the CFTC is going to look into it. And there'll okay. be some fines, you know? I see. Okay. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll definitely see. But um, very interesting day. Uh, gold got pushed down to 1236. It's it's now, what, 13 bucks higher? Silver got, so by the way, no one focused on silver. Silver, 8,000 contracts were sold in a minute. That's 40 million ounces. Right. And, and you know, that so pushed it down, you know, to 1622 and a half. Now we're at 1662 and a half. I, uh, yeah, silver came back much quicker, though, which is yeah, pretty cool. Yeah. 
So well, what, happened, what Andy's people. talking about, <laughs> it, what Andy's talking about, two folks, is this: is that what happens is this. So the speculation is, is did you know an inexperienced trader, you know, get an order, and the order, which would be really different, meaning. I can't picture giving someone an order telling, saying sell so many ounces versus contracts. You know what I mean? But that's right. where the, the deal would go is that, you know, we're well, supposed to sell so many ounces versus 1,863 contracts. And every contract, folks, is 100 ounces. So. <laughs> hey, and by the way, you know, 30,000 contracts of gold traded in a 10-minute period. Yeah. So that was, you know, I mean, this was kind of unprecedented, kind of wild. And, uh, you know, I... I Gold didn't even go down and touch support after that happened. It came right back. So as far as I'm concerned, you know what? Uh, I think this market looks good. I think it's tough now to be long gold, but I think, you know, you buy on weakness. I, I've been saying oh, for a while, listen, I'm scale long. down I mean, buy I, I just, you know, I, listen, I, I, I like, no, I, I don't actually like where it is right now. I, I, I don't mind it. Um, I don't like the idea that it didn't catch a big bid, but I do understand what you're talking about. That that's how gold is, folks. It'll drive you up a wall. Okay, so oh, it's like, 1.8 you know. million ounces is like a hot potato. It's changing hands here. I expect gold to go up uh, either uh, on Friday or later next week. Yeah. Uh, after it all filters through. I, listen, I've handled I've handled some pretty monstrous orders in my life in a gold market. Sure. It takes a couple of days for a very large order to filter through. Right. And the market generally stays very calm during that period. And that's kind of what we're seeing. So I, I kind of like it. I think it's going to be absorbed pretty pretty well by the market. Now, I think oil is really interesting here. You know, last week when we were on, hey, everyone was bearish. Everyone hated this oil. But I had pointed out to you that those crack spreads kind of turned around. Yeah. Uh, and and oil. Listen, while it's not running away on the upside, we are two bucks off the lows, a little bit more than two bucks off the lows from last week. And I think things are looking OK for oil here with the dollar weakening. I think that they have probably come to some kind of solution with Qatar. And since Qatar was bearish on the way in, it might be bullish on the way out. So, uh, well, you I, saw I, you. I don't know if you saw what Corker did today. Uh, so. And this is a smart, I think this was a smart move, folks. What, what Corker did, he's a Republican at, in, in Tennessee, and he, he's in charge of one of the committees. He says, guess what? You guys are going to straighten this out. We're not selling Saudi right. anymore arms, Qatar oh, anymore that. arms. We're not I selling you anymore arms. Right. So I we'll saw see how that. long and that that's lasts. Fine. That's I think that's smart. But I think they're going to, I think that this is this new crown prince uh, uh, pushing the Qataris back against the wall to take them away from Iran. And I think they'll capitulate. And I think this whole thing will calm down. But the problem with oil, with this crisis, was that everyone thought that, oh, OPEC's going to break apart. Everyone will flood the market with oil. They'll sell to get in front of each other. And now, if it all stays together, you know, the production quotas go on and everything is beautiful. And, uh, of course, we have in a couple of minutes the API I numbers know, coming out. I know, which is out. great. This so is always that fun. Should, Six, 4.30, right, folks, with right, API. That right should tell us. Hey, another thing I really wanted to point out. There's a couple of things I wanted to get to with you today. Um, soft commodities. You know, we just went through this July roll period. Okay. Uh, we had July roll roll to the next active month. And all of the commodities, except for coffee, you got sugar, you got cocoa, you got cotton, and you even have frozen concentrated orange juice. What they all did is they all went lower, and they all went lower to, to significant lows when open interest decreased. And now we're seeing a bounce in some of these markets, not sugar so much, but we saw a decent bounce in cotton today, saw a little bit of a bounce in cocoa today. We got orange juice back up above the 140 level. Uh, I, you know, and even co uh, co coffee bounced, even though it's open interest didn't go down. I think that a lot of uh, stale longs got out of positions here. And these things have fallen to prices that will affect production. And they're on sale right now. So I think there's really good opportunities here in this soft commodity sector on a scale down basis. I'm not saying go in full whole hog right here. I'm saying scale down basis, uh, the downside in a lot of these things, particularly in coffee and sugar, uh, you know, in, in, in cocoa, I, I wouldn't trust, and cotton, I, I wouldn't trust orange juice. It's too illiquid. Yeah, right. But the downside is, is limited and the upside's interesting. And there's ETF products and ETN products in sure. all of them.
And you have those so, in your daily essentials, right? And you exactly. Yeah. We got them in. The, you know, we got them in the daily essentials. We got them in the technical commodity report. We got them in everything. But they, these, these markets are are weak here. So so very very interesting. Isn't and it amazing? Amounts, isn't it amazing that they're so weak and the dollar is toast, man? Well, yeah, but we're seeing some signs of life. Iron ore came back a little bit today, uh, back up above eighty-five, uh, fifty-five dollars a ton. Um, the Baltic Dry Index. Index has gone from 818 to about 880 and change. So we are seeing some. We saw some some bounces in grains today. So not looking that bad here and yeah, reflecting that, that, the dollar. A little bounce in iron ore. You stay right there, folks. We just had iron ore. Yes, even yesterday I went to what 458 or 458. Stay right there, folks. Hey, Andy, I are going to be coming right back. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Right back, folks. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? Okay. EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and Equal Housing Lending. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. TFNN has put together the finest live programming lineup each trading day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected financial minds in the nation to educate traders and investors. On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we broadcast nine hours a day starting at 8 a.m. as John Logan kicks us off each trading day with a global market pulse. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we broadcast 11 hours. Get an early and healthy start to your day as Nico and Paige bring you Living a Primal Lifestyle. Then catch Andy Hecht at 5 p.m. with the Commodities Hour. Following the Tom O'Brien Show, Mondays and Fridays, catch live trading on the Nadex platform with host Tom and Tommy O'Brien, along with Daryl Martin on the Bull Bear Binary Option Hour. See the TFNN program lineup via the link on the front page of TFNN.com to get a complete overview of our TFNN shows and hosts. And keep TFNN's Tiger TV tuned in on your mobile device, PC, or Mac for the latest financial news and information throughout the broadcasting day. TFNN, educating investors. This this segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Talk on our man, Mr. Andy Heck, and we are talking uh, the markets. Uh, we're going to be the... Uh, API number. We'll have to find that API number. As we're talking, I'll uh, hunt that little baby down, Andy. I mean, one thing, keep in mind, I mean, I know the equities look really weak today, uh, but the one thing that equities do have going for them for the rest of the week is window dressing uh, for the end of the quarter. So 
We might have to wait till next week to see uh, uh, some real effects in these equity markets because you know as well as I do, Tom, you know, all of these fund manage and, uh, fat managers and everyone get paid on the results at the end of a quarter. Oh, yeah. And this is the half halfway for the year mark, and uh, they're going to do everything they can to keep things together, at least for a couple more sessions. Well, yeah, you know, it's always interesting there, too, is, is to find out that, okay, so let's picture we're both, uh, let's say, let's picture folks that everyone listening out here, you're a fund manager. You've already made a lot of money because the markets have been up. And, you know, as Andy just said, there's no doubt that's what happens. They want to keep it together until a bunch of them sell and says, I'm getting out first. We're good for the year. I got my money. And that's when this problem strikes. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Musical chairs. The music's well, still you know, playing. So watch. Let's just look at this for a second. So you pull this up and, you know, we go back to your 24-13. Um, the bottom line is up. Yeah, you're almost, you're almost up 10% for the year. Well, guess yeah. what? In a regular year, folks, money managers, they don't make that much. Meaning that 10% is a big year. So I understand. Just, the they, one thing that concerns me is that the really big funds, they just can't turn on a dime. That's itself. right. No, no, I agree. No, right. I, yeah. Right. right. So they might just say to the little guys, they'll take in whatever they want to let out right now for the rest of the week. Um, you yeah, know, so that's so a great it, point. That's you a know, great point. So yes. I think we just have to be a little cautious. Uh, you know, I, I mean, based on look, the market does not like that uh, the Senate push this uh, the health care bill uh, past July 4th. It's just another, the, the market says, oh, just another legislative failure. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, so, I mean, I think the market knows that, you know, there's, the rhetoric's been the rhetoric. There's nothing, you know, there's, yeah, there's, no, to there's Washington, no meaning. DC. There's, there's going to be no meaningful contents, period. I think the market right. knows that Well, now. you know, it is welcome to Washington, D.C. for any agenda. And things, you know, move at, uh, you know, glacial pace there, uh, if they move at all. Um, well, they're dreaming, man. They're, they're, right. they're dreaming. I understand. Period. I understand. So. But the point is that this announcement today basically started the selling. I mean, the big selling in the market. So... You know, uh, the market's frustrated with it. I'd say if quarter end wasn't this Friday, ooh, we could have an ugly week this week. But, you know, the, they, the market right. always seems to have a bullish roadblock. It does. No. Right? It, it's yeah, like yeah. uncanny. Yeah. Yeah. There's always no, something that says, ooh, it's not that clear well, now. Especially, you know? And especially because you get July 4th coming. I mean, the market yeah. likes July 4th. Maybe it won't like this July 4th. That would be kind of weird. Uh, who knows? I mean, I think, I think the markets right now, they don't care about July 4th. The market gets is about Friday's close. If you're a trader, you're sitting there, you're looking at Friday's close, you got a big portfolio, ooh, you're just praying, especially if your paycheck <laughs> is based on a close on that day. Yeah, you know right, which, which so, the fact is, a lot of them yeah. are, right? No yeah. doubt. So yeah. Super Mario Draghi, uh, Super Mario, Mario Draghi got very hawkish. I guess what, uh, what, what Yellen and the Fed did was contagious. Yeah, you know, I guess... Which is surpri it's surprising to me because then the IMF came out and they lowered growth expectations for the U.S. economy from 2.3 to 2.1%. So, you know, <laughs> I'm saying uh, I'm saying to myself, you know, you, you're getting hawkish central bankers and then you're getting the supranational fund telling you that uh, global gro that growth is lower than expected. So, you know, that's the, 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 the two don't uh, uh, jive. Really, the the amazing thing, and I agree. The amazing thing to me is that you know, and I've said this to you a million times, that it looks like Europe's a mess. But guess what? When you look at the euro, it doesn't look it, man. <laughs> whatever's happening, oh, I know. I, you know, I, you whatever know. is happening there, man. That euro not only wants higher price. I mean, if this thing, you know, if the euro folks bust through 116, get ready. Oh, for I think like, it's going to 120. I think it's going if, to 120. If, if the euro is going to 120, this dollar. Is going to 80. All they have to do, Tom, is cut, uh, is raise interest rates from negative 40 to negative 20, and a euro will explode. Yeah, well, and we'll be at 87. We'll be at 87. First. Well, I say 91. I mean, 91 oh, no, first. Stop, right? 91, man, is right now. The, the euro is going to 88. One yeah, it's, but, it's well, 9580 is my first support where I put the first support. Yeah, well, uh, but we're basically there. I mean, we're what? We're uh, you, 20, 293 points above there. Yeah, that's a five minute move. The, the, correl the correlation, if the if the euro is at 116, we're at 91. That's mm -hmm. that's that's you know, and we break that 91, it's going to be a problem because that has been the 
lower end of the consolidation since 2015, which is like, okay, so why are we at 91? Europe, Europe is in a lot better shape than they were in. They're not in great shape, but they're still Europe. Yeah. And you know what? The elections, the elections, if had, had the French election gone the other way, the euro would be heading to parity against the dollar. But the French election went pro-EU. The German election will go pro-EU unless there's some kind of a really crazy summer with a lot of terrorism in Europe, which I think is the low uh, uh, odds play here. Yeah. And it looks to me like the euro's heading for 120. Yeah, and that tells me that gold is heading for fourteen hundred. Oh no! I, hey, listen, I like that side of it, no doubt. Yeah, um, I think so. So I get one of the numbers here, Andy. Uh, API okay. uh, crude supplies rose eight hundred fifty-one thousand barrels last week. That's okay. Uh, nah, nothing, nothing special. Listen, rig counts keep going up. They were up by 11 last week. You know, there is a little bit of a lag. Uh, I think we're going to start seeing those rig counts come down with oil below $45 a barrel, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. We also might see um, a very interesting. Don't forget how tied in Qatar and Saudi Arabia and Iran are to this whole OPEC thing. And the diplomatic settlement here could contain something for oil. You never know. So be, be prepared for the unexpected there. Listen, the Saudis need oil back at $50 a barrel for this Aramco IPO. They really do. It, it, this is the way they're going to fill the coffers of their sovereign wealth fund. Um, you know, yeah, a lot no. of things go on behind the scenes here. I do think the sweet spot until Q1 2018 is 50 bucks for oil. I think we're in and the so, buy zone here. And so you, what you're figuring is Q1, that's when they're going to kick out the Aramco uh, IPO, right? Is that, yeah, yeah, the end of Q1, whatever. They'll get the valuation, the pricing, they'll kick it out. And then oil is a free-for-all. U.S. will produce 10 million barrels a day, and we'll be able to turn the light switch on and turn the light switch on, off, depending on the, upon the price, and the U.S. becomes very powerful, the biggest swing producer in the world. There's only two other producers who produce over 10 million barrels a day, and that's Russia and the Saudis. Yeah. And yeah, we I have a lot all, of power. I have, at I that have all the numbers right now. So okay. Cushing, uh, crude inventories rose 851,000 barrels. Crude, uh, Cushing was up 678. Uh, gasoline was plus 1.35 million barrels. Okay. The stilts were plus 678 uh barrels thousand okay yeah, thousand all right I, you know I, not it an did, overly it bearish it brought oil down 50 cents that's it so no, I, yeah. I i'd say i'd say it's uh it's a it's a real nothing probably right around expectations now natural gas has been interesting Tom. that's kind of bouncing back and that's going to be thursday 10 30 yep. in the morning that's listen it. folks you stay right there andy's going to be coming up at five o'clock let the voice rest for about 20 minutes man Thank thanks. you, sir. Thanks so much. Have a great okay, one. We look forward to the show, Andy. Okay. Stay right there, folks. We're coming right back. Dow finished uh, down uh, 98. NASDAQ off 100. We're going to be right back. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming. See high definition video giving you crystal clear charts as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp full fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear high definition audio and video. Tiger TV exclusively at TFNN.com. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. 
Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Tom O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. Let's get over and we take a look at the uh, financials, uh, uh, the XLF. So the XLF out here today, folks, is up 12 cents, uh, trading at 24.14. Uh, bottom line, couldn't handle price. Uh, it got up to 24.32, closed at 24.14. Uh, this is uh, looks like a small ABC down, and you know we'll see how this uh, handles price tomorrow. But this looks to me like it's going to go to the bottom of the consolidation it's been in, which is 22 dollars and 90 cents. Uh, we go into uh, BRK. So Berkshire Hathaway is the largest weighting structure inside the XLF. That's flat out here today, 167. Uh, Goldman, Goldman couldn't handle higher price today. It got to a higher high, it got to 222, closed at 220. This is a confirmed ABC structure on the way down with a 202 price target. Uh, has a high volume low at uh, 209. JP Morgan, JPM. That got above its uh, consolidation, but then gave it up on price. So that's going lower, too. Bank of America, BAC. That's an ABC down, too. The amazing thing, I, I, it was, you know, I know that I've been bearish on the dollar a long time, and I'm still bearish on it. I'm just trying to figure out what is the aspect of, like, what happens, folks, is this, is that when you have a currency that continues to get weak, most times it means that you either have a huge amount of debt, which we have, but the debt, you know, the, we're not having a problem selling bonds, um, but that's when they're selling your, their currency. So it's okay, or you get a, an economy that's going to slow down dramatically. So it's like, when you look at this dollar, I'm saying to myself, okay, so what is coming down the pike here, you know? Because if we, br if we bring this back, watch, they're going to bring this back for 30 years, or just on a monthly basis. Um, you know, you go back to the 80s, you know, we traded between 104 and, I guess, 104 and 75. Um, then, you know, the, the run-up into 2000, we did go to 2001, I mean, at 121. Then the baby crashed. So I guess when I look at this on a longer term basis, it's not that bad actually, because you know what it is? I'm gonna put this on 50 years. It looks to me like the, which would make sense too, the anomaly of the run up of the 121 was an anomaly. That's what kind of, that's what kind of you could take out of here because it seems that 106 and 88, so from 87, yeah, I guess. Okay, so from 87 to 2000, we traded in a range between 104 and 81. Yeah, so that maybe that's where we're at again. 
it's not the end of the world then. It's pretty cool, actually, understanding that. The spike higher, um, which, which it could totally make sense, too, because the spike higher, of course, um, in the two, well, that was 1996 to 2001, that was all about every one of our, you know, tech companies. Uh, people thought they were going to just, you know, basically buy the whole world. That's, that's what it comes down to. When you think about the, uh, how they sold uh, AOL to Time Warner, that just took Time Warner south. That was never the same again. Um, <laughs> that was pretty, uh, there, there was some amazing deals there. But maybe that's what it is. So that's not, that's, that, is, that isn't the end of the world deal. End of the world, rather. So let's go over to the uh, XLE. Now, the XLE is in trouble. Uh, uh, it was only down 10 cents today. This is the energy select sector. This is the king dogs in this are Exxon Mobil and Chevron. Uh, this broke a B point on the 21st, broke it with volume. We are at $64.14. Uh, now, there's, there's a huge amount of you know, support right where we are. Um, that being said, this thing looks like it wants to get on 56 bucks. And 56 bucks, you know, is not the end of the world, but guess what? That is saying that an Exxon Mobil, uh, you're at 81, we're down from 92. That's saying that Exxon wants to, you know, get down into 79. That's not that bad. We're at 78, we're at 81. Chevron just may be a culprit though. Yeah, Chevron has got a lot weaker than Exxon. Uh, Chevron... Hmm. Actually, it's got support a couple points lower, too. Maybe it's the smaller ones. Uh, Schlumberger, we take a look at Schlumberger. Yeah, this has been a one-way trade on Schlumberger. So the weighting structure is not as large, but Schlumberger is uh, already uh, at the highs of the lows of 2016. Yeah, it is. It's actually into them. So the high of the low of 2016 on Schlumberger was $66.25. Schlumberger right now closed uh, out here today at 65.13. So that's going to go after the low. And I guess the difference with Schlumberger. So Schlumberger uh, oil service. Oh, I see. Interesting. So check this out. This is really interesting, actually. Uh, so Schlumberger makes its money... Uh, providing services, technology, project management, okay? See, oh, this is interesting. And the w reason being is that this is the infrastructure, folks. Um, yeah, so Schlumberger did, we go back five years, did 45 million a year, now they're doing 30 million. They're looking to do 35 next year, but uh, right now, this, this, in fact, this quarter that they just did, it was one of their lowest quarters, they only did 6.9 million. Uh, in 90 days. They're looking for 8.3. And uh, that revenue, so check this out. This is pretty cool because this revenue is split right across the world. The Middle East and Asia is 9.3 billion. Europe and West Africa, 7.4. North America, 6.7. And Latin America, 4.2. But what that says, when you look at Schlumberger, what that's saying is that uh, there is going to be less service, there's going to be less drilling for oil and services taking care of those, that oil. So um, that, you could make that argument that, okay, does that mean that oil is going lower? Or does it mean, uh, as Andy, you know, was just talking about there, that he figured that the, the rig count would come down. And if, in fact, Schlumberger looks like they're going to make money, then that would mean that what? That if you and I were looking for more oil, we're not, we're not looking for any more oil because what we're trying to do now is cut back so that at least we can kind of you keep that price uh, where we are or slightly higher. If we go into the um, unleaded gasoline market, unleaded gasoline, still inexpensive out here, buck 43, and that could not hold price. Uh, that went to uh, $145.96 uh, today, closed at 143. Um, gasoline looks to me like XB. We are going to have some inexpensive gasoline for a good period of time. Uh, right now, when you take a look at this, it looks like the bottom of this, yeah, the bottom of this is $1.13, and right now you're at uh, $1.44. You know, this is, this, is, this is definitely at the lower end uh, of a range for a long period of time, man. Uh, I just brought this back uh, to 2,000. It's the longest. Well, let me 
I can put it back longer than that, but I think they must have had a different symbol. Uh, bottom line, inexpensive gasoline. You stay right there, folks. Andy's going to be coming right back. We had the uh, Dow Industrials. I, I'm going to be coming right back. Then Andy's coming up at 5. We had the Dow Industrials down 98. NASDAQ was off 100. We're going to be right back, folks. <laughs> Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. With over $56 million in cash and over $66 million in working capital, Great Panther Silver is positioned as a company with a solid foundation and poised for growth. While completely unhedged to the price of silver, Great Panther retains 100% ownership in two producing mines in Mexico, which is the top silver producing country in the world, along with future potential production in Peru. Great Panther is highly leveraged to the price of silver, and after a great year of performance in 2016, Great Panther Silver has a strong outlook for 2017 as well. With good liquidity in trading and strong fundamentals on the balance sheet, while remaining completely unhedged to the price of gold and silver, now is a perfect time to take a closer look at this equity. If you'd like to find out more about Great Panther Silver, then go to greatpanther.com or check them out on the NYSE market, symbol GPL, or the TSX, symbol GPR. Join Andy Hecht as he shows you how to make money in commodities. The Commodities Hour, next on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. And uh, if you happen to be watching Tiger TV, the chart you're looking at here, and I'll explain it to all you folks that are in the car driving, um, uh, what you're looking at is this is the NASDAQ composite the last year. Uh, and it's pretty amazing, folks, okay? You know, I don't use trend lines, uh, meaning uh, moving averages. I use trend lines, but not moving averages. Uh, but when something gets this close and it hasn't broken a moving average for so long, you do want to look at it because the, uh, so. In the past year, uh, I, what I have up here is that uh, you, you have the 50 to 100 to 200 day moving average, right? Well, the last time that the NASDAQ just came under it at all was on uh, the 13th of April. For It just hit it intraday for one day, okay? Uh, last time it broke it, you have to go all the way back to, let's see, this is October 27th of 2016. Now, the reason I brought this up is that it is right at it. Now, my expectation is that tonight is, not, is going to be a little nasty going across the world. Uh, and we will break it tomorrow. And that's why I just brought it up. We'll, we'll, we'll find out. Uh, but uh, if, in fact, we do, 
That's going to be the first real break since October of 2016, and we're in June of 2017, so that's pretty amazing. Let me just see the, I don't think the s and is even close to that. Does it? Maybe it is. Well, I don't think it is, though. We'll find out. Let's see. Yeah, the, the s and is not. The S&P, we're, we're at the 2419. The, the S&P would have to get down to 2404. Well, it's 2405. So you get 14 points in the S&P, but that's still a lot after you've come down 19 today. Uh, the composite, though, a different ball game. Uh, let's, let me take a look at the NDX 100, actually. So the NDX, oh, this, this baby probably already broke it. This actually, uh, I did. That's what's, okay, this is pretty cool. So let's bring this back. So the NDX broke it. Uh, let me put this, yeah, the NDX definitely broke it. Uh, and the last time that the NDX broke, the trend is back at uh, December 1st. So, six months, six months. The real question is going to be, um, you know, does it, does it also go after the 100-day? Uh, it hasn't been near the 200-day. Let me see how, this would be crazy if I bring this back for two years. Okay, so the last time it got the 200-day would be, oh, that's interesting. Because we went sideways so long, it was June of uh, 2016. So, bottom line, a year ago. Man, we've gone a long way in a year. That, that is actually amazing. So, last June 27th, and is it the 27th today? What is that? I think it is. That's pretty good how I pulled that up. Yeah. So last June 27th, you were at 42.49. And right now we're at 56.71. Amazing. That is going to be pretty wild. Uh, if we do go overseas, we take a look at the Nikkei uh, out here tonight. Uh, the Nikkei last night, folks, uh, was up $71. You're at 20022 and it had some volume up there, so the Nikkei is not done. The, you know, Nikkei still can go test 20,318. Uh, uh, if we go take a look at that yen, yeah, the yen was certainly wasn't giving us uh, any help today with the gold market. Uh, that correlation inside the yen is pretty direct. Uh, yen, yeah, yen's at 112.34, and you know it's holding. So that 113, 13's game. So it's, it's going to be intriguing watching. That correlation versus the dollar correlation versus the euro. The euro, uh, and listen, don't forget about those um, EverBank foreign currency accounts, folks. Come over to our website at TFNN. Bot bottom line, you can get your money in euros right here, right now. So uh, check it out on the front page of TFNN. You stay right there, folks. The man, Mr. Andy Hex, is going to be coming up, growling a problem with you. And always remember, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. And whatever you want in life, folks, visualize it, step into it, take ownership of it, and fly with it. Everything you need is right inside you. Go have a blast with it. Thanks for being here, folks. Wow! Go get them, folks. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. This is TFNN.